Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. It's the third episode of HeliCloud Talks Cloud, and we have uh, two new guests, um, uh, one Bulgarian and one Dutch. Uh, we're keeping the balance the same <laughs> as last time. Um, uh, we have uh, um, on the... Yeah, I did it. Wow. <laughs> Uh, on left, left, okay. What? Uh, right. Ogi. <laughs> Bottom right. Hello, everyone. Uh, he and I used to work together uh, some, uh, we calculated it yesterday, 11 years ago. Um, and we were dealing with uh, internet security products. Uh, he was doing the uh, file transfer security. I was doing, doing the email security and it was a, a fun office and fun times. And now he's very much deep into DevOps and cloud. Yeah, thank you very much, Lina. Yeah, it's, it, it's been a long time, a long time journey. Yeah, indeed. And apparently he's become a botanist, uh, judging by his background, but uh, same as, same as Aaron. Good. I don't know what, what it's with you people and, and plans. I kill everything except my... I don't have enough space. Room. Like, I can literally touch the wall here. Otherwise, I would have plants as well. Horrible. Um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so our, our, our other guest uh, is uh, uh, Aryan. Uh, Aryan, um, um, I know Aryan from back in the day. We uh, used to do a project in a company where he was doing uh, uh, project management, uh, and uh, he uh, very successfully uh, uh, helped that company uh, um, realize the value of AWS. It was not a, 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 an AWS company at all. And uh, uh, yeah, I worked with him uh, quite closely with one of our consultants who, uh, who was in his team uh, for, I don't know how long, a year? Yeah, two years. So two somewhere. years, maybe, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it was a good collaboration. I'm an entrepreneur myself, a programmer for 20 years now, um, and doing various roles in software related. And obviously, when you grow older, a bit of management. Um, <laughs> I've been doing cloud for now for six years, um, much AWS. A uh, little bit of uh, GCP and a little bit of Azure. So uh, yeah, and uh, oh, one of the reasons I wanted to invite uh, Aryan is because he's a, a, a big fanatic of uh, of Google Cloud, and I want us to not just have the AWS uh, uh, voices in here because that's uh, um, just being too uh, uh, too unary. But uh, Aryan is deeply familiar with AWS, but also really really enjoys uh, uh, Google Cloud. So that Correct. was my. I'm a I'm a language war veteran, so uh, I've uh, I've stopped paying attention to uh, to to any of the fanboyism that was .NET and Java at the time, and um, so now uh, nowadays I think uh, I'm I'm very happy that there are three clouds and they're all cool. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, I, I think this is quite uh, quite important actually, and um, maybe we can just uh, uh, bridge that into the first uh, uh, topic. Sure. Um, which is uh, uh, Microsoft announced their earnings uh, this week, and um, their cloud revenue grew, uh, according to them, uh, fifty percent, uh, which is uh, quite significant. Um, and Office three sixty five revenue is also up. Um, I think it's uh, especially here in the Netherlands we see uh, quite a bit of uh, of Azure um, uh, going on. Um, yeah, I think we talked about it uh, the the other time as well. I I don't have anything per se against uh, uh, Azure, but uh, the feeling. Somebody asked me a question. That was a really good uh, uh, eye opener. Uh, somebody asked me a question a while ago, and he said, "Hey, um, what's the unique selling point of Azure? Google Cloud is very clearly doing Google Cloud things. If you like what they're doing, you go to Google Cloud, and they're the best at what they do. AWS is consistently." Uh, breaking in uh, absolutely new uh, areas and uh, and doing real innovation. Whereas I might not be familiar enough with Azure, but uh, what I could come up with was uh, Azure is trying to catch up with uh, with AWS. Yeah, but but is, is aren't all the the non AWS parties trying to catch up in terms of uh, infrastructure as service, the the IaaS uh, or the IaaS um, offering? Um, Azure has a very strong uh, platform as a service if you're in the .NET uh, ecosystem. So their Azure DevOps um, is, 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 is highly successful, but also very usable. And I would even say mandatory if you're, um, if you're a happy camper inside the, the .NET uh, uh, ecosystem. 
Interesting. So that's yeah. really a unique selling point. <clears throat> Google Cloud has two that makes them not unique, but at least they they have they, they have the best um, cloud native support. Uh, things like investments in Istio um, <clears throat> for GKE, um, which are yeah. unmatched, um, as well as uh, big data uh, offerings. How uh, do you have any uh, any feedback? Uh, do you have any idea how that uh, agnostic uh, um, Kubernetes thing is going? That the uh, cloud agnostic Kubernetes thing is going that they uh, introduce? Because I have no visibility on it because I'm so in the AWS uh, space. I forget what I, for, I even forget what the name is. Well, Athena, was that it? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. By the, by the way, uh, I think uh, partially uh, what uh, Walter mentioned about Google Cloud is partially valid for Microsoft uh, and Azure as well, meaning that if you like Microsoft and Office, uh, of their Office support uh, for the emails and all of that stuff, you obviously, it's quite easy to actually go with Office 365 and all of that stuff. And uh, also, uh, uh, I think for this revenue, uh, quite important note is to, to mention uh, I, I, I haven't uh, noticed uh, exactly the the numbers, but Microsoft Teams actually did a, quite a good job the last year, uh, and uh, it literally I think helped that uh, people uh, with with Teams started even if they didn't didn't like a lot they uh, because of Teams they actually started uh, growing their their usage as well. But um, Teams is is free, isn't it? It comes for free with the Office three six five or nearly ah, free. No, no. Yeah, exactly. It's nearly free, and it's the uh, it's the good old uh, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, strategy. We'll give it to you for free for the first I don't know one, two, three, four, five years, and then after that you start paying. But by then you're so invested in the ecosystem that you're not ever going to change. Uh, and uh, they, yeah. they've, been, they've done this for a long time, and it, it's also their play with uh, education. Uh, uh, you know, by giving it for free to students and uh, and giving these really good programs for uh, for universities. It just uh, uh, simply means that uh, those people grow up uh, knowing Windows. And I've yeah. spoken to university students that are like, "Is there something else? Is there another cloud than Azure?" Oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah. This we is direct customers. Mantra, right? the, we the first customers. Is always free. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> Oh, so that, the, I was just making a bad joke. It's the drug dealer's mantra. The the first hit. Is yeah, always... <laughs> I, I was actually joking that the uh, Microsoft is pushing Teams the the same way that Apple was pushing that uh, U2 album that no one wanted to hear, but it was on everyone's iPhone. <laughs> there, there were jokes back then, like I, I don't have an iPhone, so Bono just climbed up my window and trying to throw the CD, and I had to chase him with a broom. <laughs> Oh. So it was the same with, with Teams, and we ha actually had customers uh, giving up on Slack and replacing it with Teams, which was a good thing for us because they were like, please talk to us on Slack, and we were like, please talk to us on Teams so that we have it consistent, consistent with all customers. Uh, there, there were benefits to it. It's, it's easier when everyone's on the same tool. It's, it's yeah, I think that's a good yeah. You're correct, but uh, I don't think, and and I think I'm repeating Slack in this uh, in this sense. Uh, Slack doesn't really see Teams to be um, a, a real competitor, and I have to give it to uh, to them. Uh, Slack is a, is a different type of system, uh, whereas uh, Teams is much more like a fancy office based uh, Skype, whereas Slack is um, like a a IRC usable by normal people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Several of my friends would literally gut you for that statement, <laughs> but I agree with you. <laughs> bring them on, bring them on. <laughs> okay, be before we make any enemies, let's, <laughs> let's switch to the next topic. <laughs> All right, uh, next topic is, let me check. Um, uh, yeah, so over, uh, over provisioning in, uh, uh, in cloud in general. Um, so uh, it's well known that cost management is one of the biggest uh, th uh, headaches for people who are uh, in uh, in public cloud. And uh, there was a uh, report from uh, I'll, I'll put it on the on the screen. There was a report from uh, uh, some place I don't even know what the place was, but there was a, a quite interesting article about uh, how um, uh, the uh, 
that over provisioning actually leads to uh, a, a giant amount of waste, which we all know. But when you see the actual figure of 26 billion, you're like, yeah, actually, I do see a lot of that. And this is quite. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. These things are interesting because they uh, uh, accumulate and become a really big thing. For example, I read that uh, in the retail industry, where in, uh, st uh, cl stores that offer clothes uh, started uh, the policy where you can return a piece of clothing after a while, the loss from that alone, because people wear it for a few days and then return it, uh, is uh, larger in the US than the amount of uh, money um, lost uh, due to uh, stolen cars, which is quite significant. Wow. So I can understand how um, uh, how the uh, over-provisioning could be 26 billion. Uh, it also has a bit to do, uh, this, this is what I encounter uh, quite a few times in, in, in different uh, settings, not, uh, well, regardless of, of e-commerce, um, is the architecture of your cloud infrastructure. If it's, uh, if it's very much VM-based um, and the, the, the systems or the system simply cannot scale well, so become, well, more resource demanding or, um, or, 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 or use more VMs or less VMs, uh, if you can't influence that at all, <clears throat> you're kind of stuck with um, with the the over provisioning because you need to well provision as many nodes as that you can maxima uh, maximally use. Um, then the only way out all of all the time. Yeah. yeah, the way only way out of that is is either to containerize, go serverless, um, or go serverless, or uh, yeah, at least. Partly rearchitecture your uh, your uh, your infrastructure to be more uh, cloud native to to be more not modern. the architecture though but the application layer I think is uh, what we've uh, uh, seen as the challenge more often than not we've seen applications that are so not cloud ready they don't even understand DNS. And we've had to do all sorts of hacks to uh, deal with that because you can't have a, a, a cloud infrastructure where you destroy and recreate resources and they come up with a new IP every time and have... And they lost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, yeah. Oh, correct, we'll just correct. go and check the IP in the configuration. For, like, come on. <laughs> Let's do a DNS for that. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the... Uh, it's a solvable problem for uh, applications where you have control over the source code, but uh, um, well, I see a lot of uh, uh, enterprise environments where they simply don't have that kind of control. And so you are stuck with this uh, uh, with these uh, um, applications that are not at all uh, cloud scalable. So auto scaling is simply not an option. And then you're, you're indeed stuck with a VM uh, that needs mm -hmm. to be on. It cannot even be two VMs uh, in many cases. Yeah. There are just uh, applications that cannot deal with uh, uh, high availability at all. It's just we need a VM with 16 gigs of RAM because the application normally uses two. But uh, at that one point of Monday morning, when everybody checks the report, it goes up to 16 gigs. And we cannot have it go down at that time. So we're, we're running this thing uh, in 16 gigs all the time. And, uh, and I think that that's where there's a giant uh, uh, waste. And I don't see that improving anytime soon. No, me neither. And uh, what I've seen as a problem is that uh, even when you have control over the source code, you have the application vendor or you're writing your own application, it's always going to be new features uh, taking priority over re-architecting the whole product to be to be cloud ready. And, and that's a real pity because if you take the time to rewrite this so that uh, you can... Um, go to containers and uh, decrease the amount of uh, infrastructure that you need to provision for it, de decrease the complexity. It's going to be a hundred times better, but no one from the business is going to see that. Of course, yeah. and nobody's going to uh, to okay it. <clears throat> but um, that's where you, well, I've dealt with this problem uh, quite a few times. Um, that's where you need to have a team that is allowed uh, or uh, or at least able to do the changes that you're literally describing, Lena, but then um, step by a step. A separate team, yeah. No, 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 it's not, not separate. No, no, no. Um, it, it must be, be the though. same team. 
Yeah, it's otherwise good. you get this uh, fancy team versus uh, versus. Uh, yeah. Then you get the show horses and the work horses. No, you, you really I mean, uh, it should be budgeted in the planning. Uh, hey, mm -hmm. there is a specific percentage of time is needed to. It's essentially it's technical debt. Uh, there's a percentage of time that is needed to deal with technical debt, and you can ignore that for a while, but it will come back to haunt you. And, yeah, uh, but, but people have been very successful in suppressing uh, the the outcomes of of technical debt. So just a straight up denying it, saying no, 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 no. This uh, this it's fine. always been this way. It's fine. Until <laughs> the spaghetti monster comes out of the closet and attacks everyone <laughs> during but then production hours. Tired, right? And then the we finger just, uh, pointing starts. Is it an application issue or an infrastructure issue? It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> By that point, it's everything. <laughs> yeah, correct. I think. Uh, by, the way, uh, by the way, a lot of uh, waste is also uh, because of uh, quite quite exactly as Walter said, uh, uh, running a, a kind of a VM mode, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, machines are actually EC2s are constantly up and running, and they just literally uh, do nothing for majority of time. So that's also quite quite a big waste. I've I've seen uh, quite a lot. Uh, and that's also yeah. not nice. And, and literally, if uh, 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 the app the app is uh, redesigned to uh, to be more cloud native and uh, go to a containers uh, with uh, uh, that that can be or serverless, as Aaron said, uh, that 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 can be that waste can be hugely decreased. No, we and had even a... if it can deal. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go on, Walter. No, ladies first. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, we had a case where we showed a, a customer uh, a particular uh, instance that was only used like once a month uh, and we were like, can we just turn that off and uh, turn it on when, that, when it's needed? And they said, yeah, let's do that. And then the team using it said, no, we can't do that because when we need it, we need it immediately. We can't wait for 30 minutes until you bring it up. So it's just going to stay on. And this is what we agreed on. And yeah. I, I don't like it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the more, uh, the longer I run around in IT, the more I see a disconnect between what engineers think is the best solution and what the business thinks is the best solution. And uh, that disconnect, the, the bigger that disconnect is, the, the more in trouble uh, companies actually are uh, when there's a, a, a distrust or a disconnect between those, uh, between those two. And uh, that's really difficult. The best, the best companies I've worked in. Uh, one of the best companies there in the Netherlands uh, was uh, I worked in, uh, in in Cool Blue, one of the uh, online retailers. Uh, very, very early in the days, it was 2005 or something. There were 140 people. Uh, we had a team uh, of uh, of back office developers. Delphi uh, was it? Uh, what we were uh, uh, developing. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow, uh, that long ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pascal Not forever. old. Yeah. <laughs> Born, um, Born, but we had a <laughs> I love Delphi. Uh, to this day, I think it's one yeah. of the best uh, languages I've ever uh, seen and the best development environment. But I digress. We had a, a, a manager <laughs> who uh, uh, who was um, uh, had the absolute buy-in from the CTO at that time, and that just meant that our manager, uh, who was also a, 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 a hard engineering uh, person would be able to uh, decide, hey, we are going to spend time on this, not because there's business value, but because this is important for the technical depth. So he didn't have to explain himself. And that trust uh, means that sometimes, yes, we would spend six months doing something that was originally planned for six weeks, but it meant that the velocity of the business was really high because when it came time that, uh, I don't know, they wanted to extend to, uh, to another country or to another uh, uh, warehouse, uh, we were already prepared for this stuff because we had uh, 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 built it into the the, the design, and, and yeah. that's really hard to explain uh, uh, if you haven't lived through it. I guess it's time for biz DevOps. <laughs> yeah, that's already a thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Some, I thought I just team. made it up, and I was like, "Oh, that was <laughs> no, smart biz, idea." Then, you know, <laughs> I, I think you can you can add small words to that and, and then have acronyms that are, I don't know, like Dutch words or German words. But. <laughs> I think that uh, for me, uh, the, I, I'm really uh, sad that, they, uh, that the term DevOps was uh, uh, coined because uh, um, the principles of DevOps actually apply to so many things in business, in life, in security. It's all about uh, shorter feedback cycles and uh, quicker uh, iterations. 
And that doesn't just go for development and operations. It goes for many, many uh, interactions. The faster you can turn around, the faster you can respond to uh, to change. That's basically but also, right. Yeah, but, but also working better, better together. together. Sorry, Arian. That's true. No, no, no. I was just saying that uh, what Walter is saying uh, works for um, uh, for car manufacturing also. It's the feedback cycle. It's is lean yeah. batch sizes. Yeah. But uh, do continue, Lena. Uh, that was uh, that was in the Phoenix project, wasn't it? It was taken from uh, factories. The whole ideology uh, that brought DevOps into life. Um, and uh, Agile yeah. was coming from car manufacturers from Toyota, I think it was. So. Both of them, yeah. And uh, the Phoenix project essentially um, uh, is a rewrite or a tech rewrite of the goal. Elihu Goldratz, uh, nine, uh, famous 80s book, one of the first business novels. And that was rewritten, but then in a tech uh, setting um, for, for DevOps and for, uh, for mostly IT management. The, the, the Phoenix project um, was more IT management, uh, whereas the Unicorn... What's it called? Well, the one from last year or two years ago, that was uh, more e-commerce, uh, DevOps, and cloud. Yeah. But, uh, um, I recommend both of both of them. I want to uh, spend the last uh, few minutes on the uh, on the last uh, uh, item because uh, that's also a really uh, uh, interesting. I mean, we can talk about this stuff for hours, as we already <laughs> realized yeah. the last three episodes that uh, <laughs> you put four smart people on a, in a group and they have enough to talk about for uh, quite a while. Um, in a small intermezzo, the the, the Google Cloud uh, uh, cloud agnostic uh, thing that I was talking about was Anthos. Uh, where they made it possible oh, to yeah. run Kubernetes on not uh, Google yeah. Cloud, but I haven't heard anything since that was hyped. No, but, but I think um, since I'm um, with a, f uh, a few um, uh, AWS experts, um, isn't it a bit like what AWS introduced a few years ago? The outpost is, is that still is that still a I'm thing? Running uh, outpost is definitely yeah. still, still a thing, but uh, outpost is a uh, outpost is a physical server rack. So uh, outpost is really uh, you get uh, a rack that is built by AWS and mm -hmm. owned by AWS, and you can put it in your data center. Oh, um, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you rent it from them. It's a uh, it's pay as you go, so you it, it gets added to your uh, to your AWS bill if I'm not mistaken as well. So uh, it's uh, very very interesting for very specific use cases. Um, but uh, the cost uh, uh, of it is uh, relatively high, so it's not a permanent solution. You wouldn't say, "Hey, let's replace one of our own racks with a with an Amazon managed uh, rack." Uh, Same thing goes with Anthos. That, 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 that's why I made uh, the link. Uh, Anthos is right. uh, is is also small use case for uh, for a few uh, for happy few. Uh, it is interesting, but like Outpost, it's uh, yeah wildly expensive. Uh, so uh, well. Okay, no, no, that's good to know. Uh, I think that uh, it's good that these things exist uh, um, for because yep. uh, they they bridge the gap between uh, on-prem uh, uh, um, realities and uh, and and cloud uh, realities, yep. and and right. that's why they exist to make it easier to move to cloud. Uh, Yes, yeah. uh, the world is a complicated world. Anyway, the last uh, topic that we had on our list uh, for today is uh, um, cloud health. Uh, they uh, released a, uh, a report. Let me put it on the screen and put it in the comments. And for me, um, there are a couple of uh, interesting uh, uh, things in there. Uh, the most interesting uh, takeaway was actually the last one, um, which is a little bit of an open door, but at the same time, it's really good to uh, um, uh, to, to put some emphasis on it. Um, for the past uh, years, uh, cost optimization has been a very big uh, topic um, because uh, if you're not careful, cloud will be hella expensive. Um, but uh, um, cloud security is becoming more of a, uh, of a thing and it's becoming more important as we go along uh, as well. And I think that uh, um, it's good to, uh, to put more emphasis on, uh, on cloud security. And it's, it's not an easy thing uh, to give an anecdote. Uh, this week, we, uh, we did a review for a customer and it turned out that all their instances were in a public subnet. 
And we said, hey, you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing well, it's it's firewalled off, so they're not actually uh, available, but you're one firewall rule away from uh, opening up your entire infrastructure to uh, uh, to SSH or whatever. Um, however, uh, explaining them that they need to do uh, something like a month's worth of work uh, to uh, to move all of their stuff to a private subnet, uh, the business benefit of that is net zero. Uh, mm -hmm. Is stuff going to run faster? Is it going to be better? No, it's going to be a little bit more secure, uh, but a month's worth of work is simply not uh, uh, on the table uh, uh, at the moment. And I think those things are really important. And it boils back down to what we just uh, talked about. That you know, <laughs> yeah, business is usual. Usually, uh, quite often, I've seen that uh, 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 the budget for security is just uh, a time, and and the expectations are just like spending a billion of dollars. Yeah. Uh, what, what budget? What do you mean? There's a budget for security? <laughs> well, sometimes there is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's 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 quite uh, pity as well because uh, people uh, and co companies and uh, project managers don't usually uh, uh, like to waste time and efforts in order to, to build and uh, make the proper rules and all that stuff. And they do start taking care of that when they are hit. And it usually hits, hits hard. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But they don't start taking care of it. They patch it up. And that's it. Well, I, I, you know, I haven't seen the continuous approach to it where you're like, okay, I got hit, so I need to do something continuously, not just every once in a while. Because we see the same thing with compliance. Uh, compliance is an issue two months before the audit, possibly one month after the audit, and not in between. And same with security, you get hit, you, you patch it up and you're like, okay, back to business because we lost so much time fixing this. Um, yeah, and I think that's the. Uh, I think that's actually the problem, right? Uh, Olga, you you referred to it as wasting time. You just said uh, we lost so much time. We didn't lose time. We didn't waste time. This is actually core to what uh, we should be doing. And uh, um, some of that comes from the fact that uh, when it comes down to hard crunching, uh, uh, reaching a project deadline, um, the question is security absolutely mandatory to get this thing online? is usually answered by no, uh, while it should be answered with yes. And this is uh, uh, where the problem comes, because then it's seen as not mandatory. So, you know, we'll do it later or we'll do a little bit of it. And... Absolutely. Yeah, I, I meant that they see it as a way uh, time wasting. Yeah, no, I'm, but, I understand. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, that question I have, I have heard quite a lot of time. Is it mandatory? It can run either way. So just put it there. Let's go, go with life and we'll just uh, keep it, keep an eye on it. No. Yeah, blind eye. <laughs> it's it, it's funny though, because with uh, with cost and with security, it's uh, important to track uh, your resources. Uh, coming full circle to what we said, where you have some instance running all the time, you also have the problem in the cloud that you don't have in a data center, where you can provision stuff and completely forget about it. And a test resource is normally not one where you're careful uh, how you secure it from the network, how you secure it with uh, user roles and permissions. And, and then you test it, forget about it. It's not just a cost, it's also a security vulnerability. Correct, <clears throat> but but that's why the these uh, suppliers like uh, the Cloud Health, I think you uh, referenced just now, uh, uh, Walter. Yeah, um, their business is essentially uh, making it part of a of a cycle. So have a cost management cycle and take security into account as well, because like you said, if you um, if you spend money on an unused test resource, that's that's a little bit of waste. But if that becomes a, a jump box for uh, for hackers into the production. Uh, uh, infrastructure, then you have a massive problem. So if you can automate part of, of, of cost management or security management through tools like Cloud Health, that, um, that's going to be a huge benefit. Um, but you see more of those initiatives. Um, I think, um, uh, was it Sam Newman coined the phrase? At least I, I heard it first from, from him. Uh, a shift left on security, meaning um, doing security related tasks uh, earlier in your development process uh, as opposed yeah. to what well all of you are describing very well uh, right uh, as an afterthought oh we forgot security <laughs> quick quick you got bringing the ethical the hackers we we need we need them we need a we need a stamp 
<laughs> it's like her term to... policy is cold and things like that have become more and more available. Correct. But I have to say, I read this uh, report from uh, Gardner, I think it was, where they said you have to have uh, a cloud optimization software uh, for cost. And uh, I have uh, uh, seen demos of quite a few. And I have to say, yeah, if you know what you're doing, and we do, uh, you can develop your own automations to track both cost and security. It's cool. not that big of a deal. But you do need the people to actually monitor the output. I'm for, exactly. I'm for exactly. On it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You need to, uh, to, to have engineers that understand uh, security risks, but also uh, can read cost reports and say, OK, yeah, because the, the largest uh, cost degrees you can do by shutting down your production infrastructure and you have no cost uh, at all. Easy peasy. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have reached uh, 930, unfortunately. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Ogi. Thank you, Aryan, for uh, joining us today. Um, I uh, would like to finish by saying that uh, we're hiring um, uh, and uh, that uh, if you happen to uh, think uh, you want to work with us, then uh, uh, please take a look at our website and uh, look at the, uh, the job openings. Um, Aryan, uh, do you want to say something uh, as a, f a final statement? No, no, th thank you for having me and um, um, it was fun. I, uh, I enjoyed my, uh, myself. Yeah, we enjoyed uh, having you. Ogi, yes. how are you? Uh, it, it was great uh, conversation. Thanks a lot for the for the invite. And yeah, Helico Out is a really good place with a really good professional. So take a look at their, at their job, job offering. It's a great place to work with. And Lina is a great manager, by the way. This, oh, this guy doesn't even, doesn't even work for us. That's like free, uh, free advertising. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not engaged with Helico Out in any case. <laughs> With any at any time, it's just don't worry, we'll send, we'll send you the check later. <laughs> it's a small IT community in Bulgaria, so everyone yeah. knows everyone. And yeah, thank you, thank you, Ogi. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.